Hi, every nation family. It is good once again to get together and to come and worship God. Thank you for taking the time out to join us with our service. This morning, I want to just let you know that we are a church that honor God. We love people. We make disciples. And we believe that in doing that, we transform society. So if you're looking for a church and you'd like to join us, this is a great place to come and grow in the things of the Lord. Right now, we want to just commit this time to worshiping God. I'm going to ask you, whatever you're doing right now, please take a moment to pause and prepare your heart as we're going to enter into His presence with a moment of praise and worship. Let's commit this time to God as you enter in by faith. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come before you. Thank you for your goodness and your kindness. Your word declares this is the day that the Lord has made. And today, Father, we will rejoice and we will be glad in it because of your goodness. And we came this morning, Father, to bless you, to worship you. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. And we say amen.
matchless, endless, love unrestrained. This is our God, every tribe
this moment, Lord, we, we bring our worship to you. Surely you deserve the worship and your word declares that it is you who seek true worshipers. And this is my prayer, Lord, that even as we bring our worship to you, that our hearts will come with truthfulness before you and that we'll bring our innermost before you, Lord, and bring it into a place of your holy throne. And so, Father, I just thank you right now that we could come into your presence with praise, thanksgiving, and with worship. And it's always good, Father, to be in your presence. Right now, we're going to transition to our actual giving. And I want to encourage you from Genesis 22, verse 8. Genesis 22, verse 8 says, And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went, both of them, together. And here we see Father Abram, the father of our faith, challenged and tested with a great sacrifice. He was indeed promised by God that he would receive a son. He received the son, and now he needed to, in fact, sacrifice the son. I see specifically in this particular scripture, that whatever we have, whatever God has blessed us with, it in essence always belongs to God. And so it is important that even when we bring our worship, that we understand that everything that we have, all that we are, it always belongs to God. And so when we look at Father Abram, and we see how he was challenged by his faith, how he was challenged by his attitude, we see that he was steadfast even though we didn't understand, he gave sacrificially. Even, the, even though he didn't have all the answers in the moment, he gave willingly. And we see, even though we didn't see the provision in that moment, he gave generously. Church, I want to encourage you that many a times we are challenged with our faith and with our attitude of giving. Let us learn from Abraham, even as he was tested, with the very blessing that God has given him. Let us adopt the attitude and the faith that we would always give willingly, that we would always give sacrificially, and that we would always give generously. And even as Abraham knew and trusted by faith that God would provide a lamb, we know that God provided Jesus Christ, the lamb of God for us as well. And let us continue to bring our wealth as our worship to God, even as we look to the Lamb and knowing that He will one day return to bring us back to His heavenlies. Let's bow our heads and let's just commit every wealth that is being given right now by faith. Let's commit that to God and let us trust that that will continue to expand and grow God's kingdom. Let's pray. Father, we thank You that it is You who bless us with wealth. Thank you for Abram. And thank you that you have even tested him in such a way that we can recognize that in many times we encounter the same testing. But I pray, Father, for those who are about to give by faith, just like Abram acted by faith. May each heart be blessed. May each heart just know that you are the God who is able to provide just like you did in the midst of Abraham. And so that is my prayer, Lord. Provide for each person way above that they could ever imagine or understand. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And we agree and we say amen.
We are really excited to, to welcome Pastor Faith. She will be ministering a word that we believe is in season, a word that we believe is going to encourage and challenge your heart, and most importantly, transform you. So open your hearts as the word will be ministered in and through Pastor Faith. Good morning, every nation family and everyone else who is joining our online service this morning. Before I bring the word of God, I will take this opportunity to thank my senior pastors, pastors Gillian, Vanessa, and the leadership team for giving me this opportunity to bring the word of God today. As I introduce myself as well, my name is Faith. I'm a, I'm a wife, mother of three young adults, and uh, a businesswoman as well. But above all, I'm a child of God. I'm a daughter of the Most High God. And knowing that, knowing my identity, it gives me a lot of confidence to be able to go through this life of Christianity. I must say that Christianity is not for the sissies. It's, 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 and especially this time we are living, we are living at that time. I know there's nothing, nothing new under the sun, but we are living at a time where if you do not know who you are, if I don't know who I am, every wind that comes will take me out. Yeah, and before we go to the word of God, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bless you. I worship you. I give you all the glory and all the honor for who you are. I'm inviting you, dear Holy Spirit, as I bring out the word. I'm praying that, oh God, everyone who hears the sound of my voice, oh God, they will be blessed. They will be restored. They will be healed. They will be delivered, oh God. In the Bible, Father, renewing of our minds by your word. Father, I pray you will accomplish everything, anything that you want to accomplish through me, oh God. Take over anything that is not of you, God. I'm praying that, oh God, I'm destroying it. I'm saying it's for no place here. In the name of Jesus, I'm covering everything everyone who is listening by the blood of God and I pray that your Holy Spirit will come and just open our ears to hear what you have to say this morning. I praise you and I worship you in Jesus name I pray. Amen church. Amen. Let's go straight to the word of God and our scripture reading comes from the book of Joshua that is chapter 1 verses 8 must say it's a very well known uh, scripture uh, let's read do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do every, everything written in it then you will be prosperous and successful that is, uh, it's a scripture that it's, it, it, it explains itself. It's Joshua was told, do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. And we are seeing uh, three things in this, in, this, in this scripture. It says that meditate. No, first it says that do not let it. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. It says that meditate day and night. And then it says that so that you can be careful to do everything written in it. So that you can be careful to do everything. <coughs> sorry. Everything written in it. And God told Joshua, this was the time when Moses had died. Just to give, to give a, a, a bit of a background of what had happened. It was during um, when Moses passed away. And 
Joshua had to take over. Joshua had to lead the children of Israel to the promised land. And God was encouraging Joshua to be courageous, not to be afraid that he would be with him. But above all, he said that he must make sure that the book of law must not depart from his mouth. He must meditate upon it day and night. And be careful to do everything. To be careful to do everything written in it. Church, this morning, I want us to, to think about the word of God. That was the law. Joshua was given the law. The children of Israel and Joshua, they were guided by the law. As, as children of God, we have the word of God. And the word of God is alive. The word of God is active. The word of God is, we have, and, and, and above all, we have the Holy Spirit. Then they had the covenant. I mean, the Ark of the Covenant. They had the law. They had the Ten Commandments every time. And it is true that Joshua was keen to do everything the way God had commanded him. If you read, you'll see that every time they will move, they will make sure that they have, the Ark of the Covenant is with them. They will make sure that it is there in front of them. And this morning, I want us to, to think about the Word of God. How much do I know the Word of God? How much do I trust in the Word of God? How much do I fall on the Word of God every time I'm faced with any problem, any sickness, when I'm stressed, when I don't have peace? In life, there's a lot of things that happen. And I'm telling you, I'm telling myself, if I don't know the word of God and I am careful to follow it, like the way God instructed Joshua, that we meditate upon it day and night. I must not let it escape. I must meditate it day and night. That is what God told Joshua. And this morning, that is what God is telling us. If we want to succeed in this life, we have to know as Christians, we don't have any other escape. We don't have any other thing apart from the word of God. And it is for sure. Remember the same God tells us that he, he esteems his word more than his name. His word is everything. His word is everything. And if we do not take this serious, we will find, like I said, being tossed by any wind that comes. Today, I want us to continue, as I speak, to think, how much do I know the word of God? How much do I trust in the word? How careful am I? How careful am I to do everything? And I'm saying this because something happened. Um, it was uh, just uh, a month after the lockdown. I went to my son's uh, room. He was studying and I was just checking up on him to know how he's doing. And you know, this lockdown so it's, it's made us to be displaced in a way. It's like uh, the house has become, it's the classroom, the house has become the office, the house has become, it's no longer a castle where after you've had a, a tough day, you come and sleep. So it's, uh, well, maybe it is our house that is like that, but all I know is that we don't have time to be together all the time. You'll find most of the time I'm in a Zoom meeting, or the kids are studying, others are having meetings. So this very day I decided, okay, let me go and see. I haven't seen my son. Let me go and just find out how he's doing. And when I went there, he said that uh, his throat was not right. He was, was the, the, he had pain on his throat. His nose were blocked. And um, there I was and I, I was like, okay, is this now this corona thing and i i left the room he was studying i left the room i went to the kitchen 
when I was in the kitchen, the Holy Spirit asked me, um, you went to your son's room and uh, he told you that he was not feeling well, but you just walked out. So the Holy Spirit told me, go back, pray with your son, anoint him. And I did that. I went back. But uh, I knew that, okay, because he was studying, I had to like make sure that, okay, I speak to him first. I did that. I told him, well, I want to pray over you. I want us to, uh, and I want to anoint you. I did that. And then after that, we took Holy Communion. And there's no other way. The word of God says that is there anyone among you? Pray for them. Anoint them. There is power in the, when you take Holy Communion, you are taking the blood that is cleanses us. You are taking the body of Christ that, 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 uh, that is, heals us. We need to be that careful to do what the word of God is telling us so that we can be successful. And the, the thing is, my son was able to feel better. He was able to continue with his, his studies. But if I missed that, uh, I would have, you never know what could have happened. But one of the thing, one thing I know is that we are always quick to think about doctors. We are always quick of, uh, to think of the next thing that we'll do, but not, the, but not the word of God. And remember, the very word of God, it tells us that, it, uh, let's read, um, let's read the book of uh, Jeremiah, let me see, I'm going to get there quickly, book of Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah, yeah, the Jeremiah 20, 23, Jeremiah 23, 29, 29, this is God asking, um, let's read, Jeremiah 23, 29, is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces. Imagine that. God is telling us that his word is like fire. It consumes anything that is not of him. What is it that you are going through and you are wondering, what, what am I going to do? Just go back to the word. Whatever it is, are you... Are you troubled? You don't know what what way to what way to take, whether left, or right. Jesus is the way. The word of God again it tells us that Jesus is the way. Go back to him. Ask him. Let the Holy Spirit speak to him. That's what I do. Sometimes I do not know. I'm hit with a T junction. I don't know whether left or right. And surely, surely, if we seek the Lord and we do everything, we do everything that the Word is telling us to do, we'll be able to find our way because it is, the Word of God is active. It is active. It is life. The problem is us. How much do we know the Word of God? That's the question. Because if I'm, if I'm faced with a problem just like like I gave an example of my my son not feeling well if I don't know that he's the healer how am I gonna pray how am I gonna lean on God how am I gonna go to God I'll be stressed out I'll be running to doctors and yet the answer is there with me let's also go to another scripture that is again very well known and it is the book of um, book of John book of John the book of John sorry for mangling up the, the Bible that is okay here I am let's put, read the book of John verses uh, no the book of John chapter 1 verse 1 and 2 in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God he was 
with God in the beginning. It is this word. It is God. The word of God is God. When you know the word of God is like you have everything. You know everything. You are you have access to everything that you need. You have good health. You have you have you have provision is yours. You have sober mind. You are a loving person. You are not afraid of anything. The word of God, we have to meditate upon it. If we don't know that, we, we need to know the word of God. If we do not know the, what are we going to meditate upon? So this morning, God is telling us, ye and you, you and me, that we go back to the word. If we want to succeed in this life, we have to go back to the word. The word that can burn anything, any tricks of the enemy. As long as you know the word, the enemy will not play with you. The enemy will not play with me. The problem is when I don't know the word, what am I going to meditate upon? Hmm? The word of God, it was there from the beginning. The word of God is the truth. It's the truth. Who is Jesus? He was there from the beginning. He knows our way. He knows our lives more than we know our lives. Problem is, again, I do not know the word of God. I don't know even this God, who, what, who he is, how powerful he is, what he can do, what he can change in my life. I have no idea because why? I know nothing about this word. I am in the dark. And like Joshua, Joshua knew. He knew that the Ark of the Covenant had to guide them. They had to make sure that is in front of them. And if you don't have this word that is was there from the beginning, before you do anything, before you embark on anything, is it a business you want to start? In the beginning, go back to the word. You want to know how to raise your children to be godly children in the beginning go back to the word you want to buy property in the beginning go back to the word of god begin from there everything begins from god and if we don't if we don't live that kind of life if i don't if i'm not gonna live that kind of life I will not be able to meditate. I'm not going to be able to meditate. I meditate with how? When there's nothing to meditate, I don't know the word. So I'm just a shell, crying with no peace. But if I know where to go in the beginning, in the beginning, every problem that I have, I go back the beginning because the word was there the word was with god the word was god that is where we have to go back in the beginning and just to continue with the knowing how important this word god continues to continues to 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 say how powerful and how we need to Go back to the word, and um, we'll read from the the book of um, Hebrews, the book of Hebrews four twelve. This is what this is what this scripture says. Let's read. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It 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 penetrates. Sorry even to divide soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitude of the heart. The word of God is sharper. Yeah, just imagine how sharp a double-edged sword. And I think if, 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 um, if the Bible was written, well, I don't know whether there were guns, but I can imagine if there if they, if they, if they were guns, 
he would have said that that gun will shoot and it will kill everything, everything that he can, he can find. It will, the word of God is like that. You send it like, the, the, like what God says. It will have to accomplish what it has been sent for because it's that active. It is that life. It will make sure that it finishes. Is it the work of the devil that is that that is always on your case? Go back to the word. In the beginning, go back to the word. Speak the word of God. Hide the word of God in your heart. I am making it a mission for myself to make sure that I hide the word of God in me. For it to give me the life, for it to give me guidance, direction, for it to use it against the enemy who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But knowing that I was, I'm, I've been given this life, and God tells me that it is in full, it is in full. But we live a half-baked life because we don't have the word. We don't know where to go. We don't know where to go. We don't know when to go back to the word. We are empty. Every wind that comes hits us. Every wind that takes us, us away. But this morning, God is telling us, my children, do you want to live victorious lives? Do you want to live healthy lives? Do you want to, to have all the provision, all the wealth that you need? Go back to the world. There's no other. You can have all the intellect. You can have all the businesses that we can have. But when life happens, like now, Corona, a lot of business went down, tumbling down. But I'm telling you, those people that are still holding on to the word, they are okay. They know that my, my, my Redeemer live it. And for that, I will still face tomorrow. The problem is when we do not know the word and so church god is basically asking us not to lean on our own understanding and yes there's nothing wrong with going to our doctors i'm not against doctors doctors are given to us by god the knowledge the wisdom that they need they, they have is from god but what i'm saying we need to start with god we need to hear from God because some of this, it's like some of these sicknesses are, they need to just be rebuked like what Jesus used to do while he was here on earth. We need just to rebuke those diseases and it's done. So yeah, let's 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 go back to the beginning, and um, to finish, uh, I want us to. Think of these three questions. How much do I know the word of God? How much do I trust in the word of God? How much do I use the word of God? And I'm asking all these questions because it is one thing to have a lot of knowledge in our heads, but we are not, we don't trust it. So we need to know that. The word of God is life. It is active. We use it and things happen. We we send it and things things take place. We rebuke the devil and he's gone. Remember the word, the very word of God. It says, "Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God." So let's let's lean on the word of God. Let's. Let's not go take solutions from the internet. Let's not go to TikTok. TikTok is not going to help us. And the thing is, if we are lost in such things, that is where we will get our wisdom. That is where we will get our solutions. Because you cannot be what you are not. If you are not, you either, you either solve your problems with what you see on TV, the stuff that you are watching, or you solve your problems with the word of God. And this morning, I want us to be people of God who believe in the word of God, who trust in the word of God, and who, 
who want to use the word of God and want to hear from God and the revelations that they will get from the word, but not the TV, not the magazines that we are reading or the Facebook, all this media stuff. God wants us to go back to his word for success. We will prosper. We will have success if we follow through carefully like Joshua did. And so this morning, there are people who have heard uh, me speaking about the word. They are here. They have not given their lives to Christ. They don't even know what you are speaking about. But um, um, I want to invite them they can call us through the, the number on our screen. We will come, we will get back to you and we will be able to speak to you about this God that we believe in, about this God that is our all in all. So take the number and we will, we will get back to you to introduce you to our Savior who is Jesus Christ who died and loves us so much to wash away our sins and to to give us life and life in full and so church bye bye god bless you pastor faith what a blessed word what a word that encouraged our hearts and really challenged us i'm encouraging you take every practical nugget that you've received from the word this morning and go and apply. Thank you, Pastor Faith. We came to the close of this specific morning service. Thank you once again for tuning in. If it was your first time joining us, we thank you that you have taken time to join us. We ask you, please go and like our Facebook page and come and check out some of our activity on our online services. I'm encouraging you as well, if you'd like to know more about our church, we have a host of information that is available on our Every Nation Facebook page. And there you could know more about who we are and what we do. And if you'd like to get connected to a small group in your specific area, good place to start checking out. Check out our Facebook page. I am so excited that I'm looking forward to see you again next week. Same time, same place. You have a blessed week. Bye for now.
says no one go Say the word and I will follow I will go where you would go Take the lead and I will follow you To places no one goes Say the word